Talk about the progression that you're working with these guys on. So it's basically just getting them to push their pace with their foot work in their hands, right? And it's reading baseballs towards the end and not just running after hops and trying to count hops, see ground balls as opposed to just, I'm just standing there and fielding it based what? off of what the ball gets to me. Ball in each hand. I'll go down with both to the red machine and the hack attack, and I'll drop one or the other. You'll either get a hard ground ball, and you'll flip it into that screen right there, like we did the first round, or I'll shoot it out of the red machine, and you got to charge it hard. Throw it here. Okay. This will work on reading pops. Okay, reading the ball and not just running after it blindly. Okay. Here we go. Let's go. Why did you choose this drill over any other drill for this squad? So it just pushes them. It's a lot more complex than regular fungos. And I think, it, one, it mixes it up for them. These guys have been inside for a long time. But two, it gets them to start moving around as if they would be in a game, because every ground ball is not going to be the same like it would be on the fungo. Got the slow roller machine and a hack attack shoot of harder ground balls. I kind of just bridge the level of difficulty Per se, I should say staircase. And it goes hard ground balls first, just to get them loose and get them fielding ground balls in general. Then all softer, slow rollers. And then I progress them into both, where they're having to start read hops and they have to guess which ball I'm going to pop in there. So, phase four, I'm giving them both. So, the first ground ball is a hard ground ball. And right when I hear it hit their glove, I shoot a slow one. Again, just to push the pace, make them be athletic and not move around like a bunch of robots. They've been doing mechanical stuff in here all year, and I wanted to start being athletes and being able to just field it and go. All right, on this stool out here, I'm gonna be hitting fungos, okay? And we're gonna be treating them like we're making things on the bag of first okay? So, why don't you guys go one by one, show me your setup. Like I'm here, and then whenever I see the block, it goes this yeah, way, and then I'm here, yeah, and right. it goes this way, and then yeah. You know how catchers, when they're catching pitchers, they show them the glove? You know what I mean? I like to think of first basemen as catchers of the infield, okay? Three things, main things I like with the first baseman in setup. One, you're doing a good job keeping your chest to the thrower, okay? A lot of kids will set up like this. On me, like if I'm gonna take a throw from you, they're like here. It's a skinnier target. I want the chest facing the fielder, knees bent a little bit so you're not like this, and showing me a target. I call it presenting the pocket. So show the thrower, like when the thrower pops up to make the throw, give him the target, okay, right here. One at a time, so we can keep flowing. After you catch the ball, just toss it out to the side. All right, cool? Let's go. Come on. Good. So first baseman defensive work here, is I just simply a fungo pick drill. So I have him set up on the base like they're going to pick it from second base here and I'm hitting them a ground ball whether it's a one or a two hop and they just got to keep their foot on the bag and pick it. A uh, little bit more variability than me throwing it or me shooting it out of a machine. That's why I'm hitting it and they got to see it and they got to read the ball rather than just striding out straight. Biggest problem, I played first base personally and biggest problem I see with a lot of guys, even including college guys, is they just stride out there way too early and they always stride straight at the thrower. They don't use the whole 180 degrees that they have. Good. Send the smallest person under the net. Keep in mind, obviously you can't go straight left to right, but you can go probably all the way from here. You can stride all the way around here. You know what I mean? Obviously you're not going to go right into the baseline so you get ran over. Keep your eyes behind the ball, your body behind the ball, okay? A lot of your misses, your leg gets in the way of you, okay? Because you stride out and your weight goes all up onto your front leg, okay? You like 50-50-ish, maybe a little bit. I like, me personally, to be a little bit on my back foot even. Where I'm sitting back like this. So my eyes are back here, close my eyes being like this and I'm completely over, right? Because if you stride out really heavy on your front foot too, you got a good chance of your foot coming off this one. You guys need water, you're good. Alright, let's go another round and then we'll add a little bit of level of difficulty. I'll start you guys out here, move you over to the back. Okay, not yet. So first round was keeping their eyes behind the ball. 
Okay, so they're struggling with striding out way too far and way too early, and their body getting ahead of their glove so they can't track the ball all the way to their glove. They kind of end up guessing on it. Biggest thing they're doing right now is using the whole bag. So a lot of them are moving their feet east and west on the bag and using both corners, which is actually really good for their age. These guys are 12. It's really good and advanced for their age. A lot of kids just keep their foot on the center of the base and don't use it. These guys are doing a good job on it. And what are you going to end with? Uh, I'll probably end with starting them off the bag, having them run over to the bag and set up and show me the target. Really big on presenting a pocket to the fielder, or not the fielder, the thrower, because I'd much rather throw to a glove as opposed to throwing to a guy with no glove on. Good. Number one.